Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2017 Nissan Pathfinder. So here's what our trailer hitch looks like installed. It has what's known as a hidden design, meaning that the cross tube is actually going to be tucked up behind the bumper here. Now this does a couple different things. Number one, it provides us with the best ground clearance because the receiver tube sits closely to the bottom edge of the bumper fascia. And number two, it provides the best overall aesthetics because we have more of a factory look there with most of the trailer hitch being hidden. So if we take a closer look, we're gonna notice that we have a nice rounded collar here on the end of the receiver tube. And it also has a matte black powder coated finish. So most of the other hitches on the market have more of a shinier finish. I personally like the matte one a little bit better because it matches the bottom fascia on most vehicles and it also provides better protection um, from rust and corrosion in that it hides scratches better. So adding a trailer hitch to your Pathfinder is going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. It can be used for towing obviously, but it can also be used for bike racks and cargo carriers. So say we are going to be towing, we're going to have a class 3 rating. The trailer hitch is going to be rated for 6,000 pounds of gross trailer weight, which is the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. And it has a 900 pound tongue weight rating, which is the downward force here on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, the trailer hitch and vehicle are rated separately of one another, so we need to abide by the lower of the two rated components. Also, if you will be towing and your trailer is more towards the upper end of the towing capacity of the vehicle, you may be interested in a weight distribution system. This trailer hitch can be used with one of those. Be sure to check out our selection here at eTrailer. So on the side of the receiver tube, we're gonna have a hitch pin hole, which will accept a 5 8 diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, this is sold separately, but most bike racks and cargo carriers do come with one. On the bottom, you're gonna see we have these safety chain loops welded to the bottom of the receiver tube. Those are going to be perfect for both the larger style clevis hooks as well as the smaller S style. So now we have a couple measurements here for you that are going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's going to be 13 inches. That measurement there will be useful when we're selecting a ball mount. That way we can make sure we get the correct rise and drop to tow our trailer level. And then finally, we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. That one's gonna be four inches, and that'll be useful when we're selecting our folding accessories, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. That way we can make sure while they're in this towed position that they don't contact the bumper. So in regards to installation, this is definitely something you guys can do at home by yourselves. We don't need any special tools, and we don't need to make any modifications to the vehicle. So overall, everything's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and walk you through this process now. So the first step of our installation, we actually need to lower our spare tire to get our trailer hitch into position. So in order to do this, we're gonna come inside the vehicle here in the rear. You're gonna have a floor covering, which we'll need to prop up. Then over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have this little plug. Once we remove that, we're gonna reveal a bolt. We're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket. And this is what we're going to use to lower the spare tire. So now we're going to come underneath the vehicle to the driver's side. This is our factory tow hook. We need to remove this. We're going to have two bolts on the bottom, two bolts on the side, which we'll remove with an 18 millimeter socket. I do recommend spraying them down first with some lubricant and letting that sit to help you get them out easier. We can go ahead and set this aside. It will not be reused. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have two brackets on the inside here attaching the bottom part of the fascia to the bumper beam. There's gonna be two fasteners in each of these, one on the bottom, one on the top. The bottom is a push pin fastener. We'll take a flathead screwdriver, we'll pry the center of that out to release the rest of it.
And here's the other fastener, which is a bolt up top. We'll remove that with a 12 millimeter socket. And we'll just take off the other one using those same steps. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have to make a small cut to the bottom of our bumper fascia here. The reason we need to do this is so the receiver tube can clear. So we went ahead and already marked this out for you, but basically the instructions do a pretty good job of telling you the size cutout you need. All we did was take a reference point on the inside here. We measured from this side to this side. I took that distance, split it in half to find the center point of our fascia here. And then I used that to mark out our measurements according to the instructions. But once we have that made, we can go ahead and use some sort of cutting tool. If you have a set of tin snips, probably some heavy duty scissors could get through this as well, or some shears, possibly a razor knife. But if you have a Dremel, that's gonna be the best tool. We're gonna go ahead and cut this out now. So now that we have our cut made, we're gonna go ahead now and just clean up all the rough edges here. You could have a file, that'll work, or if you actually just have a thin razor blade like we have here, that'll get the job done as well. So now before we raise our hitch up into position, we're gonna come underneath the vehicle here. On either side, locate the frame because we're gonna be cleaning out the factory weld nuts here, which we'll use to secure our hitch. So in order to do that, we're gonna take a spray lubricant. We're gonna spray each of those down. Then we're gonna take a wire brush and run that up through there a couple times to clean them out. We'll do that for each of our three weld nuts on both sides. Once we get them clean, take one of our hitch bolts here. We'll try to thread it in just to make sure that everything was cleaned out successfully. So if you still can't thread your hardware in after cleaning out the weld nuts, you may actually need to use a tap to clear out the hole. So we do sell these taps here at E-Trailer. The correct size you're gonna need for this vehicle is an M12 by one and a quarter. So with all of our weld nuts clean, we're ready to set our hitch into position. Before we do that, we're gonna prep our hardware. So we're gonna have three bolts and three conical tooth washers per side. Pretty easy, just make sure that the teeth on the conical tooth washer are facing up towards the hitch. So now with an extra set of hands, we can set our hitch up into position. So now we'll take our 19 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and snug down our hardware. Finally, we can come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to the specifications and our instructions. And now we'll reinstall our fascia support brackets and raise our spare tire back up into position. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2017 Nissan Pathfinder.